so my name is Duncan Coots, and I'm the head of engineering for IOHK, uh, and I'm a Haskell consultant as well. Um, so yes, I, I, look, I oversee the, uh, the Cardano project. So Cardano is a cryptocurrency platform. Um, it's based on a proof of stake uh, blockchain technology. Um, and it has a number of uh, innovative uh, ideas uh, built on top. Um, and I think one of the things that just, I mean, people describe it as being a third generation blockchain. Um, but what does that really mean? It means it's doing a lot of things that the earlier blockchain systems did, but doing them better. Um, doing them in a more reliable way, in a way that you can uh, rely on uh, greater assurance so that you're not worried that the system is going to collapse and your money is all going to dis disappear. But also a number of new and interesting ideas in the cryptocurrency space, like uh, having uh, this, this notion of side chains that uh, you can compartmentalize the system so that um, you know, if, if one part failed, the rest of it doesn't fail. Um, ideas like that. So there's a whole bunch of um, you know, new ideas um, that are being implemented in Cardano. Difference between Cardano and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, of course, was the first system, and in many ways it was very simple. Um, and in, in some sense, actually, the very first release of Cardano um, is in many ways very similar to Bitcoin. It's actually more similar to Bitcoin than it is to Ethereum. Um, in the sense that it uses the UTXO accounting model, if that means anything to you. Um, and it, it, it just reliably and simply does transfers. But there's lots of differences as well. Um, it's based on the proof of stake system. So what does that mean? Um, Bitcoin takes the energy, has the same energy use as the country of Denmark, or at least that, that's what people say. Um, and, and that's ridiculous. Um, Whereas a proof of stake system does not require all of that wasteful hashing, doesn't require all that wasteful computational power. Um, proof of stake only requires you know, a few hundred servers to run, so very cheap in comparison to, to Bitcoin. So that's one major advantage. Um, another major advantage is that uh, it's a lot quicker. I mean, Bitcoin, uh, you know, the, the, the minimum payment confirmation time is, is 10 minutes. I mean, if, the, if you think about using your, you know, your debit card, your credit card, uh, how, how many seconds does it take? And you compare that to like 10 minutes of Bitcoin. You know, again, that's ridiculous. Um, so like many of the modern cryptographic cryptocurrency systems, Cardano has got short uh, confirmation times. Um, so yeah, in some ways it's similar to Bitcoin, at least in its first version. In many ways it's, 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 it's different and better. But <clears throat> it's also a platform on which we're going to be adding lots and lots and lots of new features. Um, so that's what made that, and it's those features that will make it a third generation uh, blockchain. Right, so, so indeed, one of the major features of Cardano um, that will make it comparable to, to Ethereum is that it uh, will have um, smart contract platforms. And I say platforms, plural, it'll have more than one. Uh, in fact, three initially. Um, one of them will give you 100% uh, compatibility with Ethereum. Um, you can run any existing Ethereum um, contract. Another is, is a kind of improved version of the Ethereum style of, of virtual machine, um, which will have <coughs> a higher assurance. Um, uh, it's, it's better designed in various ways. That, that it's, so it's an incremental improvement over what, um, what Ethereum does. Um, it's a bit, a bit safer, uh, higher confidence that's implemented correctly because we're using more formal methods. Um, and then we have another uh, completely different um, smart contract system, which is very different from the Ethereum one. It's actually more like, in some ways, it's more like the Bitcoin script because it, it's based on the UTXO model. Um, but we've extended the UTXO model in a, uh, a small way that gives us a lot more uh, expressive power, an expressive power that is very similar to what you get with Ethereum, but still has the simplicity and safety of, of the Bitcoin uh, accounting style. So we have a, a smart con contract platform that's based on a language called Plutus, which, which we have been developing. And this is based on proper academic, the, the proper academic study of programming languages. Um, my background actually is in programming language design. There's a whole academic discipline of how should programming languages be designed and implemented. Um, and you know, the EVM and the Ethereum-based languages don't really make use of any of that. Um, 
and it shows, right? There, there are problems with those systems because they do not take advantage of, you know, 30, 40 years of research. And so what we're doing in, in the, on the Plutus side of things is a, an execution platform and languages which take advantage of all that great knowledge to, to produce things which are going to be simpler, uh, you know, more robust, easier to show that your contract is correct. I mean, you must know that there's so many... In the news, all the time, you, you see cases of Ethereum smart contracts failing. And that's not because Ethereum failed, but because the smart contract failed. But that was because the languages were not all that easy to use, or the languages were very hard to prove that your contract did what you expected it to do. And so that's kind of what we're aiming to do with the Pluto side of things, that, that we will have a platform and languages, more than one language, that make it easier to write contracts that you can have confidence in. So Haskell is a programming language. Um, in fact, it's the language that I studied at university. Um, and I, I have been running a, a consulting company in Haskell for, for many years. Um, so Haskell is, is part of the fruit of, of this kind of academic approach to programming language design. Uh, Haskell is a functional programming language. Um, the, the whole idea of functional languages comes out of academia. And it comes out of this study of how should you design a programming language based on mathematics and based on you know, good, good academic ideas and decades of, of peer-reviewed research. Um, so the, all of the mainstream languages that people are familiar with are, are what we call imperative languages. Um, and, and Haskell is a, is a different category. It's in this category of functional languages. Um, and the main advantage of them is that they are, they are closer to mathematics. So it's much easier to take a mathematical specification and turn it into Haskell code. It's easier to reason about what, a, what the Haskell program does. So it's easier to ensure that it's correct, that it does what you want. Um, the programs are often shorter, uh, which again makes them easier to understand, shorter to write. Um, so there's many, many different kinds of advantages. But the fundamental idea is it's based on you know, the study of, of this kind of thing. How should you build a programming language? You should build it like this, and Haskell is the fruit of that kind of research. Uh, distribution of ADA tokens. So uh, ADA went through in, the, in, in an ICO uh, back in 2016. Um, and, and that was how the original, all, all the original ADA was, was produced. Um, there are not going to be any more um, like token sales. Um, the, the stated policy on the Cardano website uh, says that um, there will never be more than a certain amount of ADA. It, it says exactly how much that is. And the, the difference between the amount that's in circulation now and the amount that will ever be in circulation will partly be used to um, fund uh, stake pools, uh, partly you know, added to the reward pool, uh, in, a, in a similar way that, that Bitcoin expands. Um, and some of it will go to a, uh, a treasury which is used to pay for improvements to the system, um, which itself will be a democratic, um, there'll be a democratic method for voting on what improvements and how do, how do they get paid for. Um, so there isn't, yeah, there's not going to be any, any new kind of giveaways, you, but you can go and buy ADA um, at an exchange. Um, interestingly, it will also be possible to issue new kinds of tokens on Cardano. You can't do that yet, but that's one of the features that we're working on. So in the same way that on Ethereum, you have ERC-20 tokens, you can create any new kind of, uh, kind of currency, token, whatever. Um, but you have to do it via smart contracts. On Cardano, you'll be able to do it directly, natively. In the same, so they'll be first-class citizens in the same way that ADA is. Um, and so you'll be able to issue them, and they'll be able to live on the settlement layer, which is our safe, simple, um, Bitcoin-like layer. Uh, that uses the UTXO accounting model um, without having to do any complicated smart contract uh, scripting. Uh, at, least, at least if you want just the basic features. If you want advanced features, you can then also use uh, scripting. But, um, yeah. Yes, yes, Cardano has uh, quite a long roadmap uh, and it's published, it's a public roadmap. Uh, I believe the website is cardanoroadmap.com uh, and there are monthly updates uh, there which you can go and see and it, it tells you what's coming up shortly and also what's coming up in the, in the further future. And continually more details are added 
uh, as things get nearer to, to being deployed or, or more research gets completed on them. Um, so yeah, that's the site to look at to see, to see what's going to be happening. Okay. So, short and sweet, thank you. Okay, all right, great, yeah. thank you.